Hey y'all, so this is your channel is about homicide and hookah. And I had to be a little extra because I ain't gonna lie. I miss y'all and I know that I have been a little unorganized because it's a lot that's been really going on. And I promise y'all, once I get organized in my real life, I'm gonna get organized in my YouTube life. So please, just bear with me. But like I said, this YouTube channel is about homicide and hookah. And it's where I smoke my hookah and I tell you about some homicide or I tell you about something that's horrifying. So let's get into it. Now, today's story really was not going to even be today's story until I came across this story. And I know this story from when I was like probably 13 myself. But when I came across this story, I said, what? Y'all letting him out? He's getting paroled. What you mean? So, have y'all ever heard of the story where a little boy body had been found and how gruesome the crime was everybody just thought okay well we need to find this man because he's obviously a drifter he's going in and out of states doing this to kids we need to find who this is the crime was that gruesome that they just was like basically this is a monster who did this only for the freaking suspect not even the suspect the murderer to be a 13 year old child do y'all remember that story? If you don't remember it or if you do remember it, I'm going to tell y'all this story today. So let's tap into it. So today, the story begins on August the 2nd of 1993. And it was a mom woman by the name of Dorina. She had two, two kids. One of the kids named was Derek. So on this particular day, Derek and his mother was running late to like get him to school due to the fact of his eight month old brother, you know, kinda acting up. You know how eighteen month olds do. They just, you know, they babies. They gonna cry, they gonna act up. So Derek suggested himself, Oh Ma, let me walk to school. Let me walk to school. And so with the school being a straight shot away from the house, the mama was just like, Okay, cool. The school was literally a straight shot down the house not even him having to cross the street to get to the other side and continue to go a block away from his house if even that much so she was just like okay however this was the first time Derek had ever walked to school by himself and little did his mama know with her uh, with her okay and the fact okay it's just a straight shot I know a lot of people say, back in those times, it was different. Yes, we could walk along, yada, yada, yada. But to me, I think, yes, I do understand that fact that people and kids, they were walking along. However, I do think back in the day, they had more serial killers. Back in the day, they didn't have no DNA. Back in the day, well, not DNA, everybody got DNA. But, you know, back in the day, they really didn't have the testing that you know could come back so quick it took a minute that's why a lot of cold cases are from back in the day because now they do have the resources they can catch people that cold cases has been 40 50 years but anyway so i do understand that a lot of people do say back in the day they could do this and they could walk along and stuff like that kids could walk along but at the same time that was a four-year-old baby but no i'm not phone nobody because i do understand too that it was a mile away it was like literally straight down the street like he didn't even have to cross the street but little did she know within five minutes of her son leaving the house that would have been the last time that she ever would have saw him So around 11 o'clock, Doreen goes to the park to go pick up her son. And at that point, she realized that her son not there. So I'm guessing she goes to the school to say like, hey, is my son still here? They didn't tell her, ma'am, he never came today. So at this point, she like, where my son? Where my son? And I don't blame her. I don't have no kids, but I would have been like, where my son? Or, where, or where's the child? Like, you know, what's going on? And I know when I was in school, like, when I didn't go to school, like, the school would call my parents and be like, okay, your daughter didn't come to school. So, was that not a thing back in the day? Maybe it wasn't because this was, again, like I said, 
back in 93. So, with the school telling her, oh, he never came, at this point, she like, yeah, where my son? So, she called the police. And within four hours of the investigation, y'all, they find four-year-old Derek's body with Kool-Aid poured over it and a banana smashed over to the side. Now, while they investigating the scene, investigating the body, they see another child around his bike around. Now, this child name is Eric. And so, Eric is kind of just like described as like a loner. He really didn't have that many friends. People bullied him. They say that one time when he was on a school bus that somebody snatched his backpack and just poured the books out and told him to pick it up. Sweetheart, who you talking to? You can't be talking to me. You can't be not be you cannot be talking to me. So they say that Eric was just described as basically a loner and people were bullying him. People were bullying him due to the fact of him having big glasses. His ears set lower than, I guess, the normal level of ears sitting. He had red hair and because he had freckles. Like, there ain't even no reason to bully. I mean, no reason enough is no reason to bully people. But I know a lot of people like to bully people about their weight. I mean, I've had people call me fat before, but... You bullied him because he had red hair. Make it make sense. But anywho, that's how people described him. So, back to the police, seeing him ride around, you know, just by his lonesome on his bike. They didn't ask him, like, hey, did you see, you know, anything suspicious going on over here? And he said, like, yeah, I kind of saw everything. I saw Derek. But he told them at first he didn't see nothing that happened. But then he said, like, okay, yeah. I saw Derek. I saw him. I was over there when it happened. And yada, yada, yada. This happened. That happened. So then they start scratching their head because they're like, well, if he said he was in this area, how do he know what happened over here? Like, he really wouldn't even be able to see what happened due to the fact of the area the body was in and the area that he said he was in that he saw what happened. So they was like, you know what? Let's just take a break. And so while they're taking the break, Eric's dad give him some Kool-Aid. Eric drinks the Kool-Aid, but I guess he was kind of done with it. He then pours the rest on the floor. So now he like, the police kind of looking at Eric a little suspicious. So you, number one, you lied and said you didn't see what happened. Then you turned around and said you saw what happened. Now... You saying, okay, you, you was right here, but how could you see what happened from the area you was in? Now you kind of half drinking Kool-Aid and you pouring the rest on the ground. I know that might not sound a lot to y'all, but y'all know I think that I'm a little P.I. Y'all, I think I'm a little investigator and I think that everything is suspicious. That's weird. So I kind of would have been like, why are you pouring the Kool-Aid on the ground? So Eric starts asking, I guess, like his family members, like, you know, do they have a suspect in the Derek case? How does DNA work? What would happen if a child did it? So at this point, a family friend, like, okay, well, let me, I think I kind of want to do an experiment because what if a child would have done it? So this particular family friend decides she wants to get Sunday recipe which is ice cream, nuts, you know, whipped cream, syrup, and stuff like that, and bananas. Everybody else, they got the Sunday stuff. However, Eric didn't get the banana. And I know at that point, she was just like, get this murderer out of my house. <laughs> like, and I don't mean to laugh, but I'm just saying, like, imagine you doing an experiment to see if somebody is a murderer. Then it kind of register in your mind like damn they might be a murderer at this point get out of my house so six days after the body had been found eric then 
tells his mother like I killed Derek. So throughout the investigation, Eric said that he was bullied by his stepdad. Then it comes out that the well not bully, kind of abuse. Abuse, bully, same thing. So you already getting bullied by the people at your school. Then you getting abused by your stepdad inside your house. So it's just like damn, you can't get away from this terror. It's been said that Eric's sister was getting sexually abused by the stepdaddy, but Eric was not getting sexually abused by his stepdaddy. And I feel like it's kind of weird because in a way, if you killed a young boy, strangled him, hit him on the top of the head with rocks, and you proceeded to sodomize him, how in the hell at 13 do you even know about sodomization? And I don't even know if sodomization is a word, but at the age of 13, how you know about that if it's not getting done to you? Also, it was said that one day, Eric came to his adoptive father and just was like, I need help. Like, I just feel like I want to hurt people. He tells him, well, when I was younger and I just felt, you know, angry, I would just like basically punch bags and punch couches and yada, yada, yada. I don't think that was kind of a good idea. So, therefore, on the day of August the 2nd, Eric just so happened to have gotten sent home early from his school for disorderly conduct because I guess the kids was bullying him. So he was already mad. So he was walking home. So with him walking home or riding his bike home, that's when little four-year-old Derek was walking to school and he saw him and was just like, hey, I know a shortcut. So his dad told him, you know, when I'm mad, I take my anger out on objects. Sadly, this object that Eric took his anger out on was a four-year-old. I mean, you really shouldn't take your anger out on nobody, but damn, a four-year-old? What he do to you? Why you couldn't go fight them bullies? Like, come on now. Come on. So, doctors did test to, like, see was Eric mentally unstable. And it's been said that his mother was taking epilepsy during her pregnancy, and it could mess up with the baby's brain chemistry. However, they figure, like, I mean, he probably not that messed up in the head because he do realize what he did was wrong due to the fact of him trying to cover it up. Okay. So, in 1994, he was convicted of second-degree murder, and he got the maximum for a juvenile, which was nine years to life. In jail, baby, he wrote an apology, and let me pull up this apology, and I'm going to have to have my head down because I'm going to have to read it from my pad. He said, I know my actions have caused a terrible loss within the Robbie family, and for that I am truly sorry. I've tried to think as much as possible. What about Derek? What about, hold on, I'm sorry. I tried to think as much as possible about all the uh, experiences De Derek would never see, like his 16th birthday, Christmas, or anything. He would never own his own house. He would never get to graduate, never get to go to college, never get married, never see his first kid. Yeah. We know that. Hell, he wouldn't even live to see five. Never mind none of that. Like, then the the baby didn't even live to go to school. Like, if I could go back in time, I would switch places with Derek and endure all the pain I've caused on him. If I meant, if it meant that I would go on without living, and he would, I would switch places with him. But I know that I can't. Everybody know you can't. And it's just like, I don't know. I wouldn't want no apology from no damn murderer. You don't care. You didn't care when you was doing it. So don't care now. However, he had 
has been denied 10 times, y'all, since 2002. He has been denied 10 times for getting parole. Man, 2020, after being denied, it, 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 in 2020, after being denied in 2012, the family was just like, at this point, don't release him. And I don't blame him. I mean, I don't blame them. Hell, I'm like, don't release him. And so, he just, he's, he's, sorry. After 27 years of him being in jail, another parole hearing comes up. And so, it's just like, he say, well, if I be released, I won't go back to my hometown. I find, like, shelter in, like, a half of a house, yada, yada, yada. But, y'all, hold on, let me smoke right quick. He was scheduled for a release on November the 17th of 2021. But he wasn't released due to the fact of him not having an approved residence. Like, he, sh he shouldn't be approved to be released having a residence or not. Because I feel like even though this murder really wasn't, it wasn't premeditated. It was just like an in-the-act murder. You did it out of anger. Anger ain't nothing that's going to go away. Hell, if you was angry at 13, you're going to be angry now. And number one, you went to jail in 1994. You finna get out in 2021, 2022. That's already... You finna be messed up because you went to jail when goddamn beepers was out. You finna come out when the iPhone 13 is out. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's already a culture shock. So, you ain't finna know what's going on. Just in 2022, I mean 2020, 2020, it was a damn pandemic. It's 2021, finna be 2022, and we still wearing masks. So, we still somewhere in a pandemic. You not finna know what's going on. So, it's a lot of stuff that could simply make you mad. And once you be mad, you feel like you got to take your anger out on people, on objects due to this, what your daddy told you. Like, I feel like the man shouldn't be released because it's what's stopping you from reverting back into doing what you did almost 30 years ago you went into jail at 13 you finna get out and you 41 that's gonna steal like that like i'm just like it's a it's it's a big gap difference as to like you really just shouldn't even get out you are in jail you went to jail due to the fact that your anger causing you to kill somebody just off of them three things alone, you went to jail in 93. It's 2021, 2022, damn near. We're still slick in that pandemic. Hell, that being angry, you need to stay locked up, sweetheart. Because, hell, the pandemic made me angry. The pandemic made a lot of people angry. But we didn't fucking sodomize a child. We didn't kill a child. So that's just my thoughts on the situation. So, y'all, this is the end of the story. Tell me how y'all like my concept, like I always say. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And, again, once I get organized within my real life, I'm going to get organized within my YouTube life, y'all. So, thank y'all, and I'll be back.